So I thought a good intro for today's video would be to tell you a little story about my own proposal when about a decade ago I was in a uh, guy's Bible study and I said, hey, I I'm thinking about saving up for a ring to propose and they all just kind of looked at me stone-faced and were like, you need to save up to get a tooth first. <laughs> Which, hey, uh, you know, good point. So uh, here's a picture of Mariah and I getting engaged. I didn't, I didn't get the tooth. He I picked didn't get me the tooth. instead. I, I picked her. I literally worked like a year and a half of weddings with, uh, with a big old missing tooth right in the eye. You should show the picture. I shot Rob before. Schneider's <laughs> wedding with a missing tooth. At Rob Schneider's wedding, Adam Sandler sat in the back row and I was working the back cam and he looked back and winked at me. You guys are off to a great start, don't you think? What's up guys? My name is Dave with Amari Productions and today I have my wife, co-founder Mariah McQueen of Mariah McQueen Marriage and Family Therapy. That's the first plug. If you're new to this channel and you haven't seen uh, the last two videos, this is really kind of like a part three. Uh, in the first part, we did a BTS daily vlog of us going out to film a very special proposal. If you follow Jamie Wolfer's channel, you know more about that. Uh, part two is the proposal video itself. And then today, I wanted to sit down and just talk a little bit about proposals and the things that you need to know before you go into your own proposal, whether that's you or your partner or significant other. If, if, if that's them, then you can just coyly send them this video. But before we jump into that, if you wouldn't mind smashing that like button, click that subscribe button if you haven't already, ring that notification bell so you know every time that we post. Uh, you can also find us on Instagram and TikTok at Amari Productions. Or, this is gonna be plug number two, Connect with Mariah for couples therapy, uh, premarital counseling, or just individual therapy at Mariah McQueen MFT on Instagram and Mariah McQueen underscore on TikTok. Yeah, I'll put some like rap air horns and some confetti. <laughs> So, the reason that I uh, made my wife stay a little bit late from, she, she's supposed to get out of the house for I'm once. supposed to hang out with my friends, okay? And the reason I roped her in is because the, the preamble to this whole discussion, the first thing is um, make sure that uh, you talk about it a little bit beforehand so that it's the surprise. The surprise should be of when it happened and that it's happening right now. The surprise shouldn't be all together that, that your partner is being proposed to. Yeah, if you're not at the point in your relationship where you're having conversations about what the future of your relationship looks like, mm -hmm. then it's probably not a good time to jump into marriage. If that's a conversation you guys are struggling to have, I feel like any sort of counseling or anything, I, I think the best piece of marriage advice I've ever been given was that it's never too early to ask for help. Yeah. And so because of that, we were in therapy like, what? <laughs> a week into our marriage. Say like days after our marriage. Days after we got back from anyway. But no, it was, it was pretty quick. Um, we, we went to couples therapy just to like start working on conversations together. And we've talked about this many times over the years that like even though like originally it might not have been like this like cataclysmic event that like sent us mm -hmm. to couples therapy. Just the fact that we got that ball rolling at such a uh, well, young. I was kidding. I meant to well, say so early in our marriage, but, but we also, also we were very, very young. young. But yeah, I think the fact that we started it early yeah. really helped set us on like a course for success. Yeah. Um, and then it made it so that throughout our relationship, if there was anything either individually or as a couple that we felt like. It would be really cool to have like an outside voice, not only an outside voice, but a professional voice yeah. in on this. Even in being a professional, it's helpful. <laughs> yeah, your therapist has a therapist. I do, her name's Joanne, she's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so you clicked on this video because you have a boyfriend or girlfriend or are thinking, you know, dreaming in the future of your engagement. And sorry, I just tricked you into getting like real, genuine mental health and relational advice. Now we'll talk about proposal advice, and I'm gonna excuse my wife so she can go hang out with people that don't, that just aren't me, because that's good for her health. I love you. Okay, bye. Get out of here. So now let's jump in to my advice for the proposal itself. Once we have established that yes, this is this is where we're meant to be. Let me sum it up as this: it shouldn't be a question whether or not your partner is going to say yes, or whether or not you are going to say yes to your partner. Does that make sense? Okay. First point kind of obvious, especially for what we do, uh, hire a photographer and hire a videographer. I feel like uh, a number of people, maybe it's not a lot, I don't know, uh, will hire a photographer, but the number that will hire a videographer is, is very low. I, I see that personally from, from our own company. 
But yet, even like today, you see so many people that have videos of their proposals and they're just shot on their phones or somebody else's phone. Just don't, don't do that. Hire somebody. Also, by hiring a photographer, a videographer, a florist, a planner, anything like that, you get an opportunity to have a test run with them before uh, your own wedding. <laughs> Wife left her phone on set. Unbelievable. No professionalism whatsoever. Okay, number two, after you have uh, secured your photo team, your video team, and anyone else that you're going to have help put this on, the next most important thing is obviously pick a good location. And that's not a surprise to anybody, but let's dive into that a little bit deeper on what would actually make for a good location to have your proposal. Number one is a good background. Also, again, duh. But to capture those keepsakes well, it's also going to mean that you're in even light, that your background is in even light, and that you're in even light. Preferably, preferably, please, uh, have you guys backlit, have you guys in soft light so that you don't have direct sun beating on your faces. It's just gonna cast hard shadows, you're gonna be squinty, you might be sweaty. So if you can find a place to have the proposal where you can be backlit, but then your background is also softly lit as backlit. Because if you're backlit, if you're in shade, and your background is in full sun, then your proposal is gonna be shots of you guys, and then just blown out background, or shots of the background and, and you guys as silhouettes. And then the last point on finding a good location that I don't think a lot of people would think about is try to find a place that is not going to be crowded. Uh, and this is where I once again reference uh, my own proposal. I'm gonna reference this a couple times through the video so that I can walk you through a really practical situation on top of Chase and McKenzie's proposal uh, that we just had last week. So Chase and McKenzie's proposal, we had a venue set aside for us so we had absolute privacy. We didn't have to worry about any people walking through. I recognize that that's generally not what's going to happen. Oh, and, and my own proposal was the same. We got engaged at Balboa Park in San Diego, which I later found out working in the wedding industry more is like a running joke in the San Diego wedding industry because the last place you want to be on a Saturday with a bridal party or anything is Balboa Park because of how crowded it is. And so naturally, I proposed to Mariah right in the middle of Balboa Park on a Saturday. And that's gonna take me right into our next point, which is if you can, go there beforehand. Go there a week or two earlier, whatever, especially with uh, whoever's gonna photograph and whoever's going to video it. Go there early and scout it out. Pick out exactly where you wanna do it, exactly like block out your steps so that your photographer and videographer can figure out where they're going to hide. Because the last thing you want is, is right before, is like as you're walking up to the proposal, or as you are being walked up to the proposal, you see a bunch of professional cameras pointing at you. Or in Chase and McKenzie's proposal, by them having a planner that was on site early and, and knew the whole plan, we didn't have to go scout it days or weeks early, we just showed up about an hour before their actual proposal so that we could get all of the information from their planner. So that's where it can be very beneficial to, to have uh, a professional planner involved this early in the process. Now I said this in the vlog, which is, would be like part one of this three part series, but uh, uh, yeah, if, uh, if you are the one being proposed to and uh, the one doing the proposing is uh, gonna be a groom, like me, um, just know that we, uh, yeah, we, we don't, uh, us grooms, we don't do the best job at um, handling this kind of stuff. So, this would be a great video to send them as a little nudge nudge, uh, hey, it'd be nice if whenever you post to me, um, you think a little bit ahead about like maybe capturing it on photo and video and, and here's some of my favorite photographers and videographers. If you cared, and flor florists that I like, and a planner. I just realized I forgot to mention something all the way at the top when I talked about hiring a photographer, a videographer, maybe like a florist and a planner. The other key, 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 key aspect to your proposal day team is crowd control. Assuming you don't have a private space like we have for Chase and McKenzie and you are going to have people nearby, no matter how good of a job you do at trying to like stake out a spot where people aren't gonna be, just, there's people are gonna be there. They're gonna walk through your shot, they're gonna walk through your space, that this intimate moment you're having. So if you can have like two extra friends that own, their only job is to see you guys coming and then to very coyly and, uh, coyly? I think that's a word. Uh, uh, secretly, uh, discreetly, uh, block off traffic and just say, hey, are my friend's proposing down there right now. Would you guys mind going around or just like holding up for like a minute? And that will do wonders for your photo, for your video, and most importantly for you guys in that moment that you don't have like some kid like running through your proposal. Now, I wouldn't think that I would have to say this out loud, but thanks to my good friend Jeremiah, I will say it out loud. Tell your crowd control people to be hidden because nothing will set off your 
proposee, your partner that you're going to propose to, nothing will set off their radar like walking down a trail and seeing one of your best friends or one of their best friends literally hiding in a planter behind a wall, Jeremiah. Yeah, that was a great story. So we were walking down, we were doing the proposal in this arch. There was a walkway right behind the arch and so I had two friends doing a crowd control so that people wouldn't walk right next to us as we were proposing. What Jeremiah decided to do was literally right next to the path we were walking down, just stand in a planner, just stand there. So of course, as we walked by the planner, I saw Mariah do a double take. I saw Jeremiah out of my corner of my eye and I was like, oh my God, he's standing in a planner. And then I saw Mariah do a double take and go, Jeremiah, what are you doing here? Now, when I came to scout the location, like I said, scout the location, when I came to scout the location a week earlier, I legitimately ran into Jeremiah there. So I jumped in and said, oh, Jeremiah, are you here with CCC, the organization that he worked with? That I literally saw him there with a week earlier. I said, oh, Jeremiah, are you here with CCC? And he goes, no. I said, fine, Jeremiah, why are you here? And I kid you not, he says, I'm here to meet Dave. Guys, my name is Dave. This went on for like another 10 seconds or so. My, my soon to be fiance, incredibly confused before I just pulled, my, pulled her aside. I was like, okay, we gotta go, bye. <laughs> Moving on to the actual day of the proposal itself. Here is the biggest key to make sure that this whole thing can go off without a hitch. Right before the proposal, schedule um, something, either like a coffee date, a lunch date, or a happy hour. Anything where you can go sit down for a while, but that amount of time you sit down could be five minutes or it could be 35 minutes, and your proposee will be none the wiser. They won't be suspicious. Because if you go, you know, anything else, it could be something where you're all of a sudden like, we should leave really quick, or like, oh no, we shouldn't go out there yet, you know, and you could kind of give it away. Now, for us, uh, we did lunch, uh, and this is my other advice for whoever is proposing. Uh, don't order food or order something really small because you might give yourself away by how little of your lunch or snack or whatever you end up eating because you're just so nervous. And then when it is time to go, make sure you have a sign to send to your people or they have to send to you so that you guys don't get there too early, too late. Uh, in my case, I think it was a text that they were already. Uh, Chase and Mackenzie's uh, case, I think Chase called one last time right before he picked up Mackenzie and then they had their picnic outside where we could see them so we kind of knew. Uh, it also can be nice to secretly gather family and friends so that after the proposal you kind of have one more like really special moment with your family and friends, but if you're not sure about how good uh, your proposee, your other partners, friends and family are gonna be about keeping the secret, you know, don't worry about it. Uh, whatever, whatever feels more important for you guys in your relationship, whether that's protecting the secret of what's going to happen versus uh, yeah, ha having friends and family around for the moments immediately after the proposal, like you saw in Chase and McKenzie's. Uh, and then second to last piece of advice, if you are the one doing the proposing, I highly recommend you write down what you want to say. Because again, in that moment, man, you are just going to be like jelly. You're just, you're not going to be able to think. You're not going to be able to form words. It's just like all of this is coming to a head. The moment is here. You have genuinely surprised your significant other. And so if you have not written down what you want to say, you could be reading it or you could have just, you know, written it down and, and rehearsed it enough that you, you have the general points. But if you haven't written it down, Man, you are just, you're gonna be bumbling up there and then you're just gonna say, I, I don't know, I just, yeah, blah, will you marry me? Which, hey, uh, if, that's, if that's you, if that's your style, if that's your personality, then hey, that's cute and, and I like it and, uh, and I hope you have a videographer there filming it so that we have that moment to show. And then my last piece of advice, after you have done all the work and the reason you have done all of this work ahead of time is so that in that moment, you can be fully present fully present, fully there, enjoying that moment. Because here's the thing, if I'm being totally honest, for a lot of couples, the most emotional moment of this whole process from, from first date to being married, to your honeymoon, the, the most emotional moment is that proposal. It's that surprise. Again, shouldn't be surprised that they're getting proposed to, we should have talked about this at some extent, but the surprise of it happening. It, it, it really is a one of a kind moment that for, for a lot of couples, you even on the wedding day itself, you won't really see a singular moment that is so strong. I think the wedding day itself on the whole is obviously a lot stronger. It's a lot more powerful. It's a lot more emotional. 
but it, you, you see it coming, you know it's coming, you know what time the ceremony's at. Uh, and, and it's, and it's uh, stretched out a little bit over an entire day. There's still very big climactic moments of either first look or walking down the aisle, first kiss, first dance, whereas the proposal, it comes out of nowhere and it is a very singular, life-changing moment. So plan it out, take the time, do your homework, send this to your significant other if, if you think they're going to be the one that's gonna propose, hire a photographer, hire a videographer, Consider hiring a planner, a florist, anything else that you need to put this together, and let's do it right. Let's do it well, and let's get this moment captured because it's going to be incredibly special. And once you have proposed, if you want to see behind the scenes on an actual wedding day, what it is really like, uh, click here. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, click that subscribe button, or click this little circle right here. Or if you just want to trust the YouTube algorithm, I'm just going to tell it right here to put, put whatever video it thinks you would enjoy the most. So if you just want to go with that, you click, click, click down here. My name is Dave with Amari Productions. Mariah is already gone. Uh, I'll see you next time.